Hello friends. Well, this is schooling students and the topic I have taken up today is patriotism. Patriotism shows your devotion for your country, your devotion to your country. So when you are born at a place, you develop a very natural affection for that place because that happens to be your birthplace and everybody likes his birthplace or her birthplace. So you feel very close to the place where you were born. No matter in which part of the world you happen to be later, but you feel uh, very happy when somebody talks about your country. Uh, and then you feel that you were born at that place and then you how you got your education there and how later in life you shifted to some other country because of uh, you required some job and you saw very good job opportunity in that country in any country across the world because the world is too big and uh, now the thinking is also changing so people are uh, going everywhere across the world where they see good opportunity but we belong to a country the sense of belonging must be there that we belong to a country a person living in america born in india whenever you talk to him about india he or she will feel very happy very elated because the sense of belonging is there in his mind so this is the first point and your upbringing takes place in a particular place uh, that happens to be your motherland, your country. If you are born in India, then at least for some years you grow in your motherland, you get familiar with the people around, you know the way of life, you know the uh, how people are living around, you know the places, you are familiar with the places, so there grows a close affinity with that place. So you feel very comfortable, you feel very happy and when, whenever you are out of that place, I mean your motherland and when you come back after some time you feel so happy. That is the real love of your motherland that goes well in your mind. Now next thing is that you need to know about the culture of your country. Because culture, what we carry from the past, from our ancestors, that is called culture. And civilization is the way of our life. So culture and civilization, what we carry from our past, from our ancestors, that is culture. And civilization is how we live our life. What things we use, how we get along with life, this is our civilization like Western civilization and Eastern civilization. Now, they have the different ways of life. We are in the Eastern part of the world, so we are Eastern civilization and Europe and America are in the West, so they are known as the Western civilization. Now, there is a mix of civilizations today because the world has become too small today. Uh, you see, Americans are following uh, Indian lifestyle, Indians are following American lifestyle, Italians are feeling more comfortable in India, Indians are feeling more comfortable in Italy. So, uh, it's just a place. So, because this world is too big and if our mental dimension is quite big, then there is no difference at all. Every place is a place. But yes, a point on a dot you can say on the world map is your nation, your country, your birthplace where you have a sense of belonging, you belong to a place, you were born in that place and so naturally you feel very happy uh, whenever you think about your birthplace. There is a very close affinity that develops um, with that place where you were born. Next thing is uh, what I was talking about uh, that you get to know about the history of your country. Now history is divided into three parts as you already know. Uh, the ancient history, medieval history and modern history. So you see now relating to India we can say that uh, we had ancient India, medieval India, the Mughal times India and before that we had ancient India. Um, so Chandragupta, Maurya dynasty and all this. So they were ancient India and Mughal 
period came medieval India, so Mughal dynasty came to in, uh, ruled in India, and then we had the modern India that began with the coming of the British to India, and that was in 1600. So from that time onwards, uh, it is called modern India. So get to know about the history of India, because when you get to know the history of India, you feel better, you feel elated rather, you feel that you know something about your country. Just getting and just studying and getting marks and making a career and moving in cars and flying uh, all over the world. That is another thing. But the thing is you must get to know that you were born at a place that is your motherland, that is your country. So you must know about your country. Next thing is we have the two songs the national songs. The first one is called National Anthem and the second is called uh, National Song. Well, there is a technical difference between anthem and song. National Anthem is Jana Gana Mana Adhina Ek Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata and National Song is Bande Mataram Sujalam Shufalam Maleya Jushitalam Shash Shamala Mataram Bande what a fine rhythm. So Janagana Mana, uh, so that is national anthem. Anthem is that song uh, in which finally there is an exclamation of victory. Means Jaya He, Jaya He, Jaya He, Jaya 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 He. So we salute our national flag. So this is Jaya He Jaya He because you are singing the victory. So this is called anthem and another is national song. It is a song. It is sung. So it is a song. So we have uh, one day Matram that is the national song. Now the next thing is we must also respect our soldiers because you see our soldiers are on the border and they are willing to give their lives for the, our motherland. So, whenever you meet any soldier, you must salute them. Uh, this is respect given to them. And I, whenever I personally, when I meet any soldier, I just salute that person because that person is taking a risk, a risk of his life. He is risking his life to uh, save us, to save the country so that we could sleep comfortably in our bedrooms. So, whenever you meet a soldier, you must salute him. This is my humble suggestion to you. Next thing is, uh, we must get to know about the basic freedoms that we have been given by the constitution of our country. And you know well that the constitution was drafted by Sri B. R. Ambedkar. So he was the architect behind uh, the framing of the Indian constitution. So uh, there are freedoms that are um, highlighted there in the constitution of India. So get to know the freedoms that we have been blessed with. So get to know those freedoms, then you feel that you are more enlightened than the ordinary ones. Because you realize, yes, such freedoms can be enjoyed. Uh, some political leaders, they violate this freedom and they speak what you say, anap shana from public platform. This is bad. They talk all bloody nonsense and the central government or the state government, if the government is powerful enough, it takes immediate action. But if the government is uh, not powerful enough, it overlooks that. But this should not be overlooked at any cost because somebody is going against, the, against our nation speaking poison against our nation. So next thing is, get to know about the government that functions. Now the government functions at the central level and at the state level. At the central level we have the parliament, the system that operates democratically. So we have the parliament and we have the um, MPs there, members of parliament and we have the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. So members of both these houses are called MPs, they are the members of parliament and uh, so and there is the prime minister, there is president of India, there is vice president. So they are all in the central capital that is New Delhi. So the capital of India is New Delhi. So they all are there. So get to know about how the government works at the central level and then coming to the state level. At the state level, at the central level, we had parliament, but at the state level, we have the 
assembly assembly so we have the assembly and the council there are two houses so one is legislative assembly and another is legislative council and members of legislative councils are called nlcs means members of legislative council and mlas are the members of legislative assemblies who are directly elected by the people like the members of lok sabha are elected directly by the people by you and me so these are the members so you must know about the government how the government functions uh, you cannot go very deep because then you have to study the subject in depth but you must have a general idea of how the government functions at the central level and at the state level so at the central level we have the prime minister at the uh, state level we have the chief minister and then at the state level we have the chief minister and the governor and at the central level we have the prime minister and the president so <laughs> this is how we get to know about the functioning of our government the democratic system that operates in our country now after that we must also understand the democratic values because democracy is the government of the people for the people and by the people as defined by abraham lincoln so get to know how the how what the democratic values are and how we have to abide by those democratic values then only we can say that we are really a uh, patriot huh? so there is sense of patriotism within us because we are respecting the institutions within the country we know about the government we know about how the system the political system operates how the administrative system operates so when you get to know all these things you feel better you feel enlightened rather and you are definitely a better student so and also you get, you also get to know about the responsibilities as a citizen so and for this you can uh, uh, read the books on social sciences published by ncert or there are many books in the market even you if you search on google google uh, then also you will get to know about the system that operates in india what are the what are our responsibility what are our responsibilities if you have a mobile phone in your pocket you just google and get to know about the responsibilities as a citizen in india so you will get to know all these things because uh, i i say again that knowledge is in our pocket the mobile phone is out and you just scroll down or scroll up and you get to know most of the things so my dear i wanted to share all these ideas with you and schooling students and in hindi i make uh, vidyarthiyon ki pathshala that's the name of uh, the video that i often put on internet uh, youtube brother so you may subscribe to my channel and then you will get to know a lot more because you see knowledge is very important a person without knowledge is like a fish without life so get to know the things around and then you can go far ahead in life and you will achieve your goal thank you